We're continuing the theme today and uh, on faith and been talking about for the last few days uh, faith. And in, in this particular uh, time together, I want I want to look at some examples in the scriptures, one of what Jesus called great faith and another one that um, I'm kind of titling extreme faith. And a third one, finally, is faith that fails or failing faith. And so I want to look at these three in our short time together. I'm hoping this will be helpful to you and encourage your heart. But first, let's get right into it. And we'll look at the, the story about where Jesus says this man had great faith. It's in Matthew chapter 8. And it says, when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him, begging him, pleading with him, and said, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And But the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, and this is quoting the words of Jesus, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go. It shall be done for you as you have believed. And the servant, his servant, the servant was healed that very moment. Now, what a wonderful story that is. Father, help us, I pray, that we might too have great faith. Now, friends, listen to me. And, and uh, I, I wanted to walk through this text with you because it's kind of unusual again. And so here's a centurion soldier, actually, a, you know, a leader among the soldiers. And he probably had many soldiers under him, just as he said. He could say to one, they'd, they'd go do it. He'd tell them what to do. They'd have to go do it. And if they didn't, they were punished. And so he, this was the life he was used to living. And so here, uh, when he was faced in this crisis situation with a servant that's paralyzed, and, um, and it's a major crisis for the centurion. And so he he's uh, in he he knows that if if the Lord doesn't intervene, this this man is not going to get any better. And so he he pleads with the Lord. Uh, the the NASB says he's imploring him, which is basically means he's pleading with the Lord or he's begging the Lord. He's crying out to the Lord about this, and his faith was considered great. Well, I mean, I, obviously it was uh, connected to his plea because his plea expressed and showed how, how he believed in and was trusting what the Lord might do. But it was also great because he believed in the words of Jesus. In verse 8 of this text, we read the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. What a wonderful promise that he's 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 believing in the power of the words of Jesus of Jesus intent and desire and ability to heal his servant and so it, I think this is powerful so his faith is great because he was believing in Jesus's words you know we can't be saved unless we believe how can we believe unless someone comes and preaches the word to us and then we have to believe the word any of you that are listening to me and and if you're saved and you know you're saved the only way it happened was you heard the word 
someone presented the gospel to you in some manner in which the Holy Spirit used and opened your eyes and you believed the words of Jesus. You believed what Jesus did for you. You believed that if you trusted him, he would save you. And my friend, listen, I, I, I fully understand that. This man's faith was considered great because he believed, Lord, just say the word and my servant will be healed. He had great faith. Let me ask you this. Do you believe in the simple promises of Jesus? Or do you waver and doubt at his word? If you doubt, it means your faith is little and it needs to increase. You remember how we, I, taught, I taught and we went to uh, Luke, Luke 17 and how the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Well, in order to have great faith, most of us, our faith needs to increase so that we trust in him, believing his word and accepting his, who Jesus is and that he's able to do what no man can do. And my friend, I tell you what, this is, this is absolutely true when it comes to our salvation. Because only God, through the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, can save us from our sins. You know, the scripture says God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. My friend, if you believe and trust in the Lord Jesus, you will not perish. You will have everlasting life. This centurion had great faith because he believed. He believed in the word of the Lord Jesus. And that if Jesus would just speak the word of healing and say, your servant's healed, then he would be healed. That's the kind of faith this man had. So we can understand why the Lord called it great faith. Now, there's also a story in the Gospels in Mark 2 where we, we see an act of extreme faith, extreme faith. Now, let, let, me, let me read this in Mark 2, starting in verse 1. When he had come back to Capernaum several days afterwards, it was heard that he was at home and many were gathered together so that there, were no longer, that there was no longer room not even near the door, and he was speaking the word to them. So let, let me just reiterate here. Jesus is at a house in Capernaum and um, in the home, and there's so many there that there's not any room at all in the house. And it says in verse 3, they came bringing to him a paralytic, a man that was paralyzed, and he was so paralyzed that he had to be carried by four men. And being unable to get to him because of the crowd, so they could not even get near Jesus enough to bring their friend down there, maybe have Jesus lay his hands on him or, or pray for him or something, this man be healed. They couldn't even get close enough to get his attention and so that Jesus could minister to this friend of theirs. But being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. And then, of course, some of the scribes said they were reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak this way? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning uh, that way within themselves, he said, why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your pilot and walk. But, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pilot and go home. And he got up immediately, picked up the pilot and went out in the sight of everyone so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, we never seen anything like this. Wow, what a story. It's an amazing story in, indeed, but it, it focuses in on the faith of four friends of a paralytic. 
they had what I'm terming, <clears throat> I'm calling extreme faith. Faith that was going to make sure they got their friend to Jesus. Faith that was not going to let anything deter them from getting to where Jesus was located. It, it was such faith that they even, no matter what anyone said or anyone did, anyone would do, they were going to make sure their friend got to where Jesus was. It's an act of extreme faith. And I think that's why Jesus says, it, it says, when Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. And so he, he knew this. He, he saw their extreme act of faith. And this is an example of intercession. Of course, we pray for others in intercession. That's why we call it that. And so we're calling on the Lord for others. Well, here's four friends bringing their paralytic friend to Jesus. And they're going to do whatever it takes to get him there. And so they did. They, they uh, uh, made a spot in the roof, lowered their friend on, on down to, to where he was right where Jesus was. And Jesus saw their faith, that extreme act of faith. And my, my friend, we saw great faith earlier. Now this is extreme faith that will do anything to get to where Jesus is. And, and uh, my friend, I wonder how extreme your faith is. Let me ask you this, these questions. These four, four friends brought their friend to where Jesus was teaching. And it, this extreme act of faith uh, was acknowledged by the Lord Jesus. He saw their faith. That's recorded for us. Now, is your faith the kind that can be seen by others? You know, people will talk about my, my faith is private. It's a matter of, yeah, but that's not the case here. This is an act of extreme faith. It's, it's being seen. This is like a public confession that they're believing in and trusting in Jesus to do something on their behalf. It's, like, it's in front of everybody. That's how serious these friends were. It's an act of extreme faith. And Jesus acknowledged it. said, Jesus, seeing their face, said, Son, your sins are forgiven. Which I, I have to admit, it seems like a strange response. But this is the Lord Jesus. In extreme situations, Jesus responds sometimes in extreme ways. And so here is what we're seeing. This man's sins are forgiven. And it takes the religious people. Uh, it shocks them. It catches them by surprise. The whole event, you would think, would catch them by surprise. Nothing said in the story about the, the tearing off the roof of the house. Nothing is said about that. Uh, you know, arguing he shouldn't, they shouldn't have torn up the house or they're going to have to pay for this house or the insurance won't cover that situation. But no, the, the religious people are reasoning in their hearts that Jesus was blaspheming God had nothing to do with the man. It had to do with what Jesus said. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning this way, he said, why are you reasoning about the, these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or get, get up, take up your pallet and walk. And so that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. He got up, immediately picked up his pallet, and went out in the sight of everyone. And the response of the crowd, they're, they're like gasping. This act of extreme faith led to, and I'm sure the homeowner, whoever owned that house, was not a bit worried about that roof. Because what had happened there was a tremendous miracle. Well, my friend, I, I, I think it's beautiful. I, everybody, you know, they're amazed. They're glorifying God. They're saying, we've never seen anything like this. And you know, when a life, it's that way. When a life is turned upside down and changed, transformed by the, by the power of Jesus Christ, everybody just stands around and is amazed at it. Look what the Lord's done. We've never seen anything like this. 
It, it was a, a, an act of radical extreme faith. And friends, this is a tremendous, tremendous story, I think. And I hope, I hope it's encouraging to you because um, that, that uh, your faith also can be seen by others. Uh, let others know that you know the Lord. Walk with Him. Live in a way that you believe God is real and others can know that you believe God is real. Uh, does your faith get the attention of Jesus? Do you care enough about your friends that you're going to try to get them to Jesus? If your faith is neutral and careless, then maybe it's a little faith and it needs to increase. Well, let's take a minute and pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you. And Lord, I pray for those listening. Lord, that they might believe the simple words of Jesus. Just say the word. That we might learn how just to believe those words of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for, for those friends that maybe are listening that they'll get their friend to Jesus. They'll do what they can to get him there so that he can know the Lord too, so that his sins can be forgiven. And in this case, a great miracle took place. Father, I thank you that your, your son, my Savior, is able to do what no man can do. Nothing is impossible for God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We give you praise and thanks for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.